In this video, we're going to be setting up this solar panel to charge my house battery off-grid. So, our 100 watt solar panel showed up from Reno-G. We're going to go ahead and get this thing wired in. I'm going to be putting a plug into the side of the van so that I can run an extension cable and have this panel set out uh, kind of off into the sun when I'm camping and have the van parked in the shade still. Plus, the van's already nine and a half feet tall. I don't want my panel sitting up there and getting smacked with branches and stuff. And I don't want to be drilling any more holes through the fiberglass and introducing more opportunities for it to leak. So I'm going to have it kind of a standalone panel with an extension that plugs through the body of the van into the charge controller. The panel I'm going to use is a Reno G 100 watt standalone panel. I bought it without a charge controller because I already have a DC to DC charger with a built-in MPPT installed in the van. I got this 30 foot extension cable. I'm actually going to chop maybe a foot and a half, two feet off to run through to the inside of the van to the charger, but uh, I've already got the solar connectors that'll plug right into here, so that makes that part easy. I'm just gonna have to chop these ends, put ring terminals on to attach it to the C-Tech. To pass it through the van, I'm gonna be using this um, bulkhead connector. There's several of these things out there. Not all of them have like fantastic looking reviews. Some of them claim to be 30 amp connectors, like this one. Those connections are way too small. I ordered this one too. That's a much more reasonable size, but I'm gonna have to solder the wires onto that. And this basically goes onto the body of the van. This is gonna be attached to that extension cable. Goes this way. Plug it in. First thing I'm gonna do is measure out and cut a section of wire that'll go from the bulkhead connector to the battery charger. So this is going to be the extension cable that runs from the van exterior to the panel itself. Uh, these connectors are going to connect to the back of the panel. So the end of this extension is going to go through this plug, which is going to connect to this end through the van body. And then this end goes from the bulkhead connector to my charge controller. The next thing we're going to do is disassemble the plug so I can feed in the extension cable wires. Unfortunately, I found out that this wire insulation was just a little too thick for my wire strippers. So I made some careful work with some scissors, snippers, and a razor blade. Make sure to add heat shrink tubing to the wires before you make the permanent connection. We're also going to pre-tin the wires and connection points with solder before actually soldering them together. I think I want some more here, you hold the wire. This does tend to be easier with an extra set of hands. So while I hold the tip of the wire into the cup on the back of the pins, my buddy Nick heats the two surfaces with a soldering iron. Drop it there and then it will, once it heats up, it'll push into the hole. Yep, so kinda force it till it stops. Just slightly. Yep. When the solder on both pieces melts, a little more solder is fed into the connection for a really solid bond. There it is. There you go. Sweet. So here's the top tip. Don't solder these connections and heat shrink them and forget to put this on. With that mistake fixed, I can now reassemble the bulkhead connector and then I just need to add some ring terminals that'll connect to my battery charger. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Perfect. Look at that. Oh, man. So before I put the terminal lugs on, I'm gonna need to cut a section of the red heat shrink that I'm gonna use for positive wire.
Unfortunately, these wire crimps didn't have the strength to crush this battery lug, so I was forced to improvise with a sturdy pair of wire snips. <clears throat> there is a proper tool for this job, but this will work. So we'll slip the insulation over like that, heat shrink it, and we'll have a really solid connection. So somewhere around here I'm going to be putting that socket, I'm thinking maybe directly above here, but I need to take the face of my power wall off and make sure there's two air conditioning lines that run right here, make sure I have enough clearance. Okay, so this is the DC to DC charger, this is the solar input and the negative ground, so this is where those two cables we just made are going to be connecting. But and the wires are going to be punching through the back side of this panel. So I'm going to take this face off and make sure that I don't run into my air conditioning lines. There is some insulation back behind this wall panel, so it looks like I'm going to have to cut away a little bit more of that. But should be otherwise clear I think. Now for the scary part, drilling the hole. I used the weather seal gasket as a rough template of where I wanted to start the hole and then remove it once the hole started so I don't accidentally damage it. Ideally you'd use a hole saw the exact size you need. Unfortunately this power plug was a weird size that I didn't have so this step bit will have to work. The hole might not be as straight or clean but it will get the job done. I then clean up the hole with a burr whip and then mask it off and prep it for some color match spray paint to protect the bare metal. Once the paint is dried, we can then feed in the wires and finally get ready to mount up the plug. I picked up this one inch rubber o-ring from the hardware store just to add a little bit of extra weather sealing when the cap is screwed on. Now I'm going to add another hole in the face of the power wall so the wire coming from the bulkhead connector can connect to the charge controller. I'm just going to take that, stick it in. Okay, so that's connected. Now the only thing that's left is to plug in the extension cord and then plug in the solar panel and see what happens. Once I plug this in, there should be power going to the charger and then I'll run, in, run inside the van and see if the charger's doing anything. Hey, look at that, immediately. There we go. The light's on for solar panel input. Light's on showing that it's connected to the battery. There we go, the voltage is climbing up now. Oh, this is awesome. I'm stoked. So that was a pretty straightforward project. There was a couple things that might be a little bit scary like drilling a hole in the van body or uh, soldering some wiring connectors and things. But uh, if you're converting a van, that's probably something you're gonna have to learn how to do at some point so it's a good thing to learn so i do have a couple more kind of diy conversion videos that i'm going to be working on but i really want to get out and uh, start filming some more camping adventures i've just got a, a list of things i want to get done to the van first so those traveling camping videos are coming i promise i just got some stuff i want to get out of the way first so until next time i will see you guys on the next video if you like to follow along with the rest of our adventures make sure to subscribe and to make sure you don't miss out on any other videos, click the notification bell as well.